Welcome back everyone to another movie review. Um, today we're talking about Ricky Stanicki. I know this one was a little, we're a little late posting this video because this came out last week. Right. So we're kind of a week behind here. But I will say this movie was good enough that I felt like we needed to make a video on it even though it's still a week past. Like we have to, we, we gotta talk about the Stanicki. Yeah, so I guess first off, the whole kind of concept and feel of this movie felt very fresh. And it felt like a comedy movie you haven't really seen before. With honestly a set of actors you felt like you hadn't seen before. Like you've seen John Cena and Zac Efron in countless other movies, but you haven't seen that kind of combo. It, it was just some good dynamic combo going. Mm -hmm. Good chemistry, I guess is the word for it. Yeah. Good comedic chemistry. So the basic plot of the movie is the three friends, our three main friends, they, since childhood, they made up this fake friend called Ricky Stanicki, who they blamed all their, you know, all their accidents bad on, all their on. bad shit they would do. And they brought that with them into adulthood. So they'd miss like baby showers and stuff like that to go to concerts and festivals and you know, just kind of everything. I think they did the World Series one time. Mm -hmm. um, so they're always using them as a kind of a lie and an out. And find, the whole plot of the movie is finally the lie catches up to them. And that's just kind of what the movie's about. And it's so great watching it all unfold. And you know, John Cena is Ricky Stanicki, um, but I, I love seeing how they get there because they have to go through Rock Hard Rod, which is fucking hilarious. The whole Rock Hard Rod was, I think it was funny because it was very unexpected to see John Cena singing as old mm. 80s people. Like it's, it's just very, it's very out there and random <laughs> and you wouldn't expect John Cena to be doing that. Maybe you would expect <laughs> Jimmy Fallon to be up there doing that, you know? Yeah, like, I don't know. well, I'm saying like, it just doesn't fit his, his character of his what repertoire. he does. Yeah, his repertoire, which is why I think it made it so funny. It was great to see uh, Andrew Santino and I would say his first big film that he's the star of, I would say. Like, he's the lead role in the film. He's been in other movies where he's um, kind of a side role. But this movie, he's like a lead role. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really cool to see him because we we love him as a comedian. But I also just think his his acting and comedy looks very real. So he's kind of just having his real emotions in the situations, which makes it even funnier and whatnot. Like, it seems over the top almost, but it's not. Like, he's so mellow about how he, I guess you could call it like physical acting, like his facial uh, expressions and yeah. some physical, but like, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I, I would don't know say you would think he's just, he is a really good actor, but your initial thought is, oh man, he's just acting really well. But then if you're like us and you watch the Bad Friends podcast, you know, Dude, this is just how he is, and he's actually just translating that to the screen, which is kind of cool to see. Yeah, so I thought that really shined in the film. But I would say I think John Cena was the funniest, like, character in the whole movie. Um, just through beginning to end. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't say the end scene particularly, but... Um, he brings up something that his boss is doing during conference calls and meetings and stuff like that. And it is just so freaking funny the whole way it goes down and the way they play it. And then at the end of the movie, they show a little remix TikTok that the friends made of what he was mm -hmm. doing in the conference calls. And I just couldn't stop laughing. It was so good. It was so good. There were and a so lot of laughs. I won't say it because I want to keep it fresh. Um, there were a lot of laughs that maybe I wasn't expecting. Like, I love the main actors. And so you go in with high hopes and I was like, I don't know though. You, you always have a little bit of skepticism because you're like, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe it just won't be good. It was released on Prime, which nothing against Prime. That's but true, a Prime sometimes comedy. Sometimes straight, to, yeah, straight yeah. to streaming sometimes aren't the best, but 
it was funny. Like I laughed most of the time too, which I sometimes don't do. I'm a very harsh yeah. critic sometimes. Well, I was almost wishing like, hey, this almost should have been a theater movie. Like the whole theater would have been laughing during this film. Yeah. Like it, there's so many scenes where you could see a whole room of people cracking up. And it's I think way it, different too. it would have had a great theater energy, I think. So it's a bit of a bummer it went straight to Prime, but I'm sure it was a bit of a safer money play and more of a guaranteed profit for them, which kind of sucks nowadays. But I don't know, just, just a little thought there. I really enjoy the depth they gave to the Ricky Stenicki role because they, the whole mm -hmm. story was they gave him a Bible of everything he's done in his life because they've made up this fake person and everything, you know, just who he is. And so he does all this stuff, like he flies over to Africa three times a year to help with the hungry and like all this crazy shit. But R Ricky Sinicki, John Cena is able to like... Embody that role. He He almost embodies it too well. Mm -hmm. Well, I was gonna say, I bring it up because I really enjoyed the scenes where People were trying to call him out and say, hold on, Ricky Sinicki's not a real person. And he would know his facts so well, he would be able to like, well, if you look at the curvature of the this and the the and the economics and would just like dumbfound everyone. And they're like, oh shit, like, wait a minute. This guy's awesome, hold on. That, <laughs> and man. it just kind of kept escalating and escalating. And it, it was just, it was great to see it unfold. One thing we were talking about before we started the video was we hope that other movies kind of start moving oh, this way yeah. too with both the storyline and kind of just moving into those classic comedies again. I haven't really had a lot of that in the last couple of years. So hopefully this kind of opens it up for maybe comedians like Andrew. I know that yeah. a couple of our comedians that we watch, they're they're getting out there. Like Shane Gillis was on SNL and oh, Bobby Lee's in a couple an movies. An Andrew Shane and Gillis movie with Theo or it, like, oh, yeah, oh my gosh, a movie with Bobby that would be crazy. Lee and could this be a new wave of your Owen Wilson, Vince Vaughn, and like John Favreau movies and Ben yeah. Stiller, and where it's just a group of great comedians who are making not low budget films, but like just low budget fun films that you love to watch. Just like this comedy. is a movie where, dude, five years from now, I'm still gonna be laughing at this movie. <laughs> like I'll rewatch it and still crack up just as much because it was mm -hmm. done so well. And I feel like that's how all the like Ben Stiller movies are too. Like yeah, Dodgeball, timeless. Wedding Crasher. Yeah, they're all very timeless films. So I hope this kind of paves the way for more timeless movies that we did. I did forget about that. Good. Uh, okay, yeah, so I think rating this movie here, we're definitely gonna put this one at spicy because it, it was just a nonstop laugh fest. And I already wanna go rewatch this movie and just rewatch all the funny moments. It was so good. It. It felt maybe just an inch long, an inch, it was. maybe it was by close 10 to two minutes, hours. maybe 10 minutes long. Yeah. But the story's also really good, so you kind of need that extra 10 minutes. But mm -hmm. I, I just think for a comedy movie, the, the um, your tension span struggles to last past well, a certain 130, point. 130, 145, yeah. maybe. Yeah, I'd say 145 is your prime comedy, like. Mm -hmm. An hour, hour 45. Yeah. yeah. I think that's about it for the review on this one. We, I know we're supposed to watch Imaginary, but we're struggling to get that one in our theater or on our streaming apps. And now Ghostbusters comes out this week. So I'm like, uh-oh, we're definitely going to just usurp Imaginary with Ghostbusters. So are we going to get to Imaginary? I don't know. I haven't really looked into it. Maybe it was trash, but you know what I did here today? Hmm. Officially announced, coming 2025, the Pooniverse movie. The monster horrorverse of all the Disney characters. You're gonna have Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Piglet. You're gonna have the Mad Hatter. You're gonna have Donald, Goofy. It, they're all gonna be there in an Avengers style monster movie. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed watching. We'll for sure have Ghostbusters up this weekend because we'll be seeing it on Friday. So we'll be seeing that for sure. And I think that will be a good movie. So 
I think that's one to tune in for. But yeah, hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see y'all in the next one.